This is you're going to take a look at dressing up designs with brushes. You know, if you're dealing with just clip art, clip art is static. It's not really interactive, and the brushes in Corel Draw are very interactive. So with these different brushes, we can form or shape our art to our design. Whereas with clip art, we have to load the clip art, and very often the shape or the form isn't really exactly what we're looking for in relating to the design or the shape of the design that we're working on. But with brushes, we can dress up our designs very easily, very quickly. I've got this pretty standard baseball design here. What I want to do is I just want to add some um, thorns or barbed wire or something going around the outside. Something to give it a nice little touch here. Do that, I'll go to my artistic, my artistic media tool. I'll open up my brushes and actually I'll go with, I think we'll go with some thorns to go around the outside. So I'll come down to my thorns folder, select that, and then I'll just simply come in here and select one of my thorns and I'll probably want to work with something like this one here. Now all I need to do to apply these thorns is just simply start drawing the circle and I can form that right around my design. Don't really like those thorns, I'm going to go take a look at another pack here. I like what's going on here with this particular pack of thorns. Now the thorns is really just a graphical element to offset my design, but if I was working with a straight thorn, which is what I made my brush from, I'd have to reshape that with the envelope tool and everything, but I can come right in here and shape this up directly and draw as a brush and add a really nice effects with these brushes to designs, dress them up and present options to clients. So this particular brush, I'm going to go ahead and double click here with my pick tool and we'll bring this down here, right there. I'm going to double click here and add a node and I'm just going to reshape this just a little bit to bring it down through here and then I'm going to go ahead and bring this out this way and I'm going to shape it around my design, around this shield that I have here so that my design is kind of flowing with my shield. And I can bring this up here. As you can see there, it's just going right up around there. And then I want to bring this up in here at the top. But what I want to do is, because of the flow of my layout, and because I can work with this brush, and every once in a while I'll lose my wireframe there, I want to drop a node here and bring this over this way just a bit. And then I can bring this other tip of this thorn right up into the top of my bat just like that so that this piece of art really fits with the flow of my design now if I want to I can bring this out down here even more right around the bat if I wanted to but there's not going to be need to do that hit control Z so that's really a strong benefit of brushes is even though this is a very simple design we can fit the flow of our objects when the brush is right around the actual flow of our design now that being the case here, all I'm going to want to do now at this point, I'll go back to working with my mouse, is just go ahead and select this and duplicate this over here to the right hand side. Now I want to mirror this, so I'm just going to go ahead and select my handle here, hold down my left mouse button, hold down control. Now if you're looking for basic Corel training, the best thing to do is get into power training. I explain everything I'm doing when I'm doing that, but because we're working with brushes, this is a little bit more of advanced training. Now, my thorns are going right up along around the outside of my design here, which I'm quite happy with that, and I like the way these are. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to go ahead and right click here and select Break Apart Artistic Media Group. This will now become a piece of static art. It's no longer a brush. I can't edit it or form it, but I'm not going to want to because I have the form that I want. Right click, Break Artistic Media Group Apart, and I'll go ahead and delete that line there also. Now I'm going to take these two and I'm going to go ahead and group these. Holding down my shift, I'll group these and create one object from these. And then I'll just go ahead and right click from my center X here and select order. Go to back of page. Once you go to another layer, that'll be fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some black set up here or a color behind this because we're going to have some color on this design as we're setting it up. We'll be working on, I guess, a blue t-shirt and we'll take this and send this to the back of the page. I just sent it to the front of the page. I want it to go to the back. I'm going to have to go to another layer here. Right click, order, to back of page, other layer, yes. And then there's my thorns around my design. Now see, this is already starting to offset this design or change it radically, but it only took me a minute to add that effect because I'm working with brushes and I'm not browsing my way through a bunch of clip art. But 
you can see a big difference in what's going on with this design. Now the kids in the schools and the youth groups and pretty much anybody that's in graphic design has seen the t-shirts coming out of the malls and the mixed martial arts t-shirts, the afflictions, etc. is really going to like setups like these. Now I'm going to take these two brushes here, I'm going to give these an outline, excuse me, these two thorn patches or these two thorn elements that I set up here. I'm going to give these an outline and I'm going to give these an outline that's going to be white and that's going to be behind fill and I'll set this up as 8 point and that'll be fine. And now you can see how that's offsetting that. Now, dealing with that, I've got the issue here with my baseball bats. Now I probably want my baseball bats to have an outline on them also because of the way the colors are going in there. So I'll go up here and click on the bat. Do I need to ungroup this? Yes, I do. Ungroup all. Hopefully I've got the outside of the entire bat. Now I've got part of it. Hit Control-Z. And we'll go in here. I've got another part of it there. Now I've got the whole bat. Let me see here. No, I don't. I'm going to need that object anyway. I'll go ahead and delete that. The same here. And now I should have the entire bat. If I give that a red for an outline. Yep, that's fine. I'll give that an 8 point behind fill. Change that to a white also. Come over here. Ungroup all. We'll do the same over here. Click off, click on, go ahead and delete all these extra graphics I have on the top of the bat here. And actually all I'm going to do is just right click on this bat, drag this over here. You can see when the crosshair appears, release, copy all properties here. And I'll have the same outline there. So I've got the bat set up with the flames, excuse me, not the flames, but the thorns. And the next thing I want to do is put a drop shadow on this. And I'll actually do that over here. Just to kind of offset that just a bit, we'll put a drop shadow on there. And we'll go ahead and grab right over here. Now I've got, I've got the wrong tool for a drop shadow. I want to come off the center here, make sure I've got that selected. And then come off the center, even though I don't have that, we'll come off the center. There's my drop shadow. I want to change my drop shadow opacity to 100. And my feather to, let's change that to 8. As you can see right there. Now that being set up, I'm going to go ahead and right click here. And we, we right click twice, I just want once. And we'll click break drop shadow group apart. What I'm going to do at this point is actually convert this to a grayscale bitmap. So I'll go bitmap, convert to bitmap. Grayscale 800 dpi, 300 dpi, transparent background, select OK. And then I'm going to put some effect on this and convert it back to a monochrome just to offset it. So here I'm working with the brushes and then going back in with my Fashion Factory. But this being set up the way it is, I'm going to want to copy that. And we'll go ahead and paste that back in. I just want to darken up that drop shadow effect so I can apply more effect to it. And this I'll right click, select order, go to in front of and I'll just click on the blue rectangle here. And that'll be another layer. Now I've got that set in there. I probably want to bring one more in there because what I'm going to do is set this up as like a, an affected outline with some effects from the Fashion Factory. I'll right click on this, order, in front of and we'll go to our blue object here select OK even though that's a different layer now I've got three of these here I know that but they're all on top of each other so I can't select them all but all I can do is I can hold down shift and alt and I'll click one time two times and I know that I've got those selected three objects this will take bitmap convert to bitmap grayscale I don't need this and I don't need that and select OK but I want to keep my transparency for going back to my monochrome if you need monochrome training, that comes with Fashion Factory or the Secrets of Design Effects. I'm simply going to go to my Advanced Tools Fashion Factory. And we'll bring up our Fashion Factory. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Textures. And I'm going to go with the Psychedelic Halftone for this effect just to give it a kind of off-the-wall look. Or I could just crack it or do whatever. But I'm going to go up here into my P's. Psychedelic Halftone Mambo and we'll select apply as transparency. Go ahead and minimize, zoom in, see what we got for an effect there. 
and we got a really nice off the wall type of effect going on there. I like the way that is, but I'm probably going to want to darken that up even more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to bitmap, convert to bitmap again, transparent background, select OK, let that process. Let's see how dark that is. That's not that dark. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that in one more time. We'll do that one last time here. And this I'll right click and go order and select in front of and go on my blue object here. We're going to move our layer. That'll be fine. Now this being set up like this, I'm just going to go ahead and hold down shift and alt. I'll get both of these two objects selected. Bitmaps and convert to bitmap. Grayscale again, just to put these two together. Bitmaps, mode, black and white. And I want line art. You can see we're getting a really funky effect here. It doesn't look right, but it'll process just fine. Select OK. I'm going to left click to knock out my background color, right click to white to change my foreground color. Come here to my thorns. I can see that my outlines are cutting off here. I want to change my corners and my end caps here. We'll round our corners and our end caps. Select OK. And I'm going to change that to a blue, kind of match the color of my design. And now you can see I've got a really off the wall effect I've built with my brushes and the Fashion Factory going around the outside of that design. Change this to a black and it'll really pop. As you can see there, and I'll get these thorns here, and I'll change that outline to a black also. And I probably want to change the fill of those to a white. And now that starts to really pop. So you can go ahead and edit your colors with Control Z and we'll hit back. I've got black in there with a white outline going off that. That's even more effect. Or I could go with something like a red. Actually, I don't like that red. I like the black better. And I could fill that with like a gray, maybe, or something like that. But we'll hit Control Z and we'll go back. And you can see just how crazy of effects and elements and designs we can create very easily working with these brushes and then bringing in our other tools, such as the Fashion Factory. And of course, if we want to color separate this, we can go with simple sets. So this will be our first round or our first session on touching up designs or tweaking designs, adding elements and effects to them.